Well, good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all from all of us here at the Music Museum here in Kewbridge in London. It's a great pleasure to have you with us this afternoon for the first concert in our 2021 concert series. And if it's not too late, may I wish all of you a very happy and a healthy uh, new year. Now, as you know, we are still in lockdown here in London and we're unable to have a live audience here at the museum as we would have hoped. However, the show and the music must go on and there is no finer musician at all uh, than to make this happen than our guest this afternoon. And our concert is going to be a little uh, different. It's going to be a mixture of music and conversation. And some of you have very kindly already sent in some questions. And of course, if any of you have any during the, uh, the broadcast, if you'd like to send them in on the live stream, I'll do my very best to uh, raise them on your behalf. Anyway, enough of the chat for now and lend an ear to the music. So please, ladies and gentlemen, give a huge round of applause and a warm welcome at home to our wonderful guest this afternoon, Mr. Len Rawl. <laughs> as ever in your wonderful hands. I, I, we start off, if I may, just by saying, I know a little while ago you had a bit of a health scare. How are you feeling now? I'm fine. I'm fine. I've, um, I'm temporarily without my vox humana. Oh, right. Vocal cords are suffering today, but uh, But the tuba profunda is in good order. Oh, I think so. Excellent. It's, it's just nice to be here and uh, to relax with this wonderful machine again. Um, it's always been a favourite of mine. And of course, this whole institution with all the wonderful uh, player pianos and player instruments 
it's just a pleasure to walk into. Well, thank you, it's, and it's a, always a pleasure to have you here, Leonard. Keep it going. Keep, well, we'll do our very best. And I think, if, I, my, if I'm correct, you were in earlier in the week to tune. Hmm. All in good order? She's fine, yes, I think. Uh, there's always something to do. You always find a... Um, that's the one thing that, with looking after these wonderful instruments. You just need to, to deal with the, the minor faults as they come, you know. So um, we, we tend to find one or two on every visit, but um, nothing serious, just age is catching up with that. I know that feeling. <laughs> I know that feeling. It's interesting, because uh, one of our lovely volunteers, Ian Kirby, was in earlier on, and he said he'd snuck into the back oh, yes. to hear you, once you'd tuned it, just playing the organ. He said it's absolutely magic just to hear you just doing that. Um, and I have to say, I've done that as well, and it is something very special. Now, in, t in terms of the music um, you're going to play this afternoon, the second piece, yes, I know that absolutely like the back of my hand, but yes. the first piece, not so, I don't know that one. What was that? Well, that's the one that's my nice little earner. Ah. Uh, it produces a royalty for me every now and again, and it mounts up over the years. Um, it's a little tune that EMI Records invited me to compose and right. record for them. Um, they said, we're looking for a tune that there's no business like show business uh -huh. style. Um, and I said, oh, well, I went away and just thought about it. Yeah. And I thought, well, if I just take a little section, a little feel out of the middle of show business and build something either side of it, um, that should do the trick. And so what you heard there was something that probably you thought I was going to play, though this is like show business. I did, business. yes, yes, that's exactly what I thought was coming. And as I say, it's, um, it's been on a, a library record for some years now, and I look forward to receiving the six monthly royalties. Perfect. So thank you for the top and take me today. <laughs> that's great. So what are you going to play for us next, Len? Um, well, I think we were thinking of having some Latin music. Some Latin music sounds good to me. I think we uh, look upon these wonderful instruments as entertainment pieces, and people like to tap their feet. Absolutely. And they like to hear one or two of the little percussive effects in the instrument. So it's fantastic. Let's see how many of them I can conjure up for you here. Sounds wonderful. So, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy Len now playing a Latin American medley.
Absolutely, yes. Actually, can we say hello to our 95 people who tuned in to watch us live at the moment? And a lot more are tuning in and recording it to watch it at the later day. So, those of you there, a very good afternoon to you who tuned in to watch us from all over the globe. Hello there. So, many of you were global before. You well, are now. How about that? Interesting, I love the condo condo again. It reminds me of two years ago um, when we did our, our Christmas concert here at Neapolitan Music. And strains of all the beautiful music we played from great composers, we chucked Condo Condo, condo in. And that was the one that brought the house down. It's a great, it's a great thing. It's just that rhythm, isn't it? You can get four bars of that just to start with when you're away. Absolutely. Now, many of our listeners, or should I say viewers probably, will know that many years you had a beautiful empire at the Leicester Square or in your home. Mm. And the question was asked was, what was it like living with the mighty Wurlitz in your home and being able to come home at the end of the day and unwind playing it? What was that like? Well, I, I always think I'm the luckiest guy in the world, but uh, of course it didn't happen just by chance. There was a lot of hard work involved in it, but um, the simple answer to your, your question is that uh, it, was a sim it was quite a, simply a joy to have it. It's a musical instrument, just like the piano that we have, um, and we just treated it as such, and the children, as they grew up with us, you know, it was just another part of the furniture, but it was always something that was there to take away all the worries of the world, all the difficulties that happen in one's business life. Um, just sitting and relaxing like this afternoon, just making music, uh, as well as you can in the mood that you're in um, on the instrument that you have now. It just so happened I, I had the pick of the instruments really because it was renowned as being an instrument of exceptional quality and fine specification. And I learned an awful lot putting it in with the help of some very good professional friends. And we lived with it for 54 years. Seems impossible to think that uh, um, there was that one in, in my own home, and of course before that, for 15, 20 years, we had the instrument in my father's home as well. So I've been a lucky boy to have enjoyed getting to know what they're about, mm. both uh, tonally and structurally, and the quality of these American-built Wurlitzers is second to none. We'll talk more a little bit about the Empire Leicester Square Organ a little later on, if we may, but you talk about you being a very lucky guy. I consider myself a very lucky guy that I was privileged to spend a lot of hours sitting in your, your living room with you sure. and Judith, talking and hearing you play and also being able to, um, to play that particular world itself. But one of the, of the many pieces that stick in my mind that I heard you play over the years, I remember you seemed to have a very a fond, a fondness for the music of Ronald Binge. And I just wonder what it was about his music that particularly appealed to you. It sounds strange, such a wonderful, wonderfully recognised musician, but it was simplicity. Um, he had a very basic approach to his compositions, but he always managed to make the music say, tell a story really, mm -hmm. and. Uh, if you look at the title of any of his tunes, um, you, you wonder what you would perhaps compose in that idiom. But he just came up with a melody or a rhythm that perfectly fitted the title. And I found that very appealing. Yep. Apart from that, um, as I got to recognize that he had a wealth of uh, uh, compositions, uh, he uh, he was a very modest man, and everybody he came in contact with spoke very dearly of him. And he just loved to just get on with, do what he enjoyed doing. And if you happen to like it, so be it. If you didn't happen to like it, it didn't worry him at all. But of course, he, he did strike lucky in the, in the one sense that um, he formed a very close relationship with the, the, the orchestra of Mantovani. And he came up with some stylings that ideally suited Monty's approach to the violin section in particular. So um, I, 
was curious, obviously, to know a little bit more about him when we heard all the million-selling records of Decca that Mantovani sort of put out. Um, and as I say, the more I collected copies of his music, the more I uh, appreciated it. And then I read the book about him, yeah. Sailing By, mm -hmm. because that tune it haunted me for many, many years driving back from um, sessions of playing electronic demonstrations in the early hours of the morning and come one o'clockish, something like that. Sailing by was the tune that heralded the, point, the fishing forecast. Yeah, well, the, oh yes, the weather forecast. Weather, yes. weather forecast yeah. So, what piece of Ronald Binge's music are you going to play for us this afternoon? Um, uh, this is a little, little known piece, I think although much loved by musicians themselves. Uh, it's called The Water Mill. And if you can imagine the wheel just gently turning around and, um, well, just give it a listen and see if you agree with me that the melody, simple as it is, just works so very well and um, puts you into a state of relaxation. Well, you'd be pleased to know, just to put you out of that relaxation, state of relaxation, that all your children and grandchildren around the country are watching and say hi. <laughs> so, hi. So there you go. So, Glenn, we look forward to hearing the water mill. Thank you. 
You'd be pleased to know, then, that we're actually we're reaching the far corners of the earth. We're actually we've got people listening to us from Australia. And a special hello to Ian in Perth. Thanks for tuning in, Ian, and sending greetings. So very nice to have you with us. I hope you're enjoying the music in far off Australia. Now, let me... Just before I yeah. interrupt, yeah, please. Can I give a shout out to um, a very good friend, uh, Bill Shoemaker? Sadly, Bill is very sick at the moment, and uh, he's undergoing s serious treatment. So, Bill, keep it shit up. Well, well said, Len. Bill, all the best from all of us here at the Musical Museum, too. So, Len, your association with this organ goes back for the last 60 years, <laughs> which is amazing. I mean, that's more than most of us have been around here at the Musical Museum. So, that's an incredible achievement. Um, how did it all start? And, what, and Fiona asks, what made you start, start playing the theatre organ? Oh, what made me start playing the theatre organ in general? Hmm. Or this one in particular? Well, the theatre organ in general, and this one in particular. Uh, well, this one in particular, that's easier to deal with, I think. Um, have I lost? Have I lost? No, I think um, we're fine. Yeah, we're good. We're all right. Um, I used to listen to the radio broadcasts uh, through the 50s, early 60s. Um, at 10 o'clock every morning, we had a half an hour theatre organ broadcast. Yeah. And there were one or two standout organs. Um, the Tower Blackpool, obviously, just had a magnificent sound that t tickled my ear. Um, but most of the others were fairly bland uh, at that time. Um, many of them were, weren't even being tuned and looked after. But um, I was lucky enough to hear, as I say, during my national service years, I stole away at 10 o'clock from my clerical duties to the CO of the camp at Aldershot and listened to the broadcast. And I was eager every, every time to hear um, one or two particular Wurlitzers. And this one stood out head and shoulders above everyone else because it had terrific clarity and uh, variation of tone. And that has always been my abiding interest uh, in, in making music myself is to not just get the notes right, hopefully, <laughs> but to uh, make it interesting tonally. Yep. And this one had a character unlike any other world it's I have heard any, anywhere. And so when I came out of the National Service, um, I was lucky enough to get involved with playing for the Miners' Matinees at the ABC Richmond. Yes. And it wasn't long before I was asked to play on piano the Miners' Matinees at the Commodore Hammersmith. And I thought, well, this deserves a trio. Uh, I wonder if I can ever get my hands on the Regal Kingston, which Joseph Seal used to play so very well. Um, and again, I was introduced to the management there, and um, Joseph Seal came and interviewed me, and very kindly allowed me to complete my little trip from the ABC Richmond to, Hammers, to Hammersmith, and then through to play the miners out at the Regal Kingston upon Thames. Um, it was a salutary experience because. Little did I know in the first few occasions I went in to play that Mr. Seal himself was standing at the back listening. Nope. As he would, of course. Yes, as he would. But he was a, a, a very, very charming gentleman. Uh, and he, he gave me lots of encouragement, not by way of saying what I should do or what I shouldn't do, but by saying how much he enjoyed this sound or that sound and the other. And it was partly that, I suppose, along with a few other organists saying something similar, that kept me going in this direction of the sound. You know, why should all organists sound the same? They shouldn't. They should have their own sound same, yeah. and their own style. So I've kept going, and I'm still enjoying it. <laughs> well, that, you can't get more than that, really, can you? I mean, obviously, Joseph Seal was forever associated with this organ, and it's interesting that you say, you know, that it, it's not so much what he said as what he didn't say almost, yes, that was an influence, yeah. influence on you in those early days. Encouragement. Encouragement, absolutely. You, you 
can't really ask for much better than that, can you? Wonderful. And you'll be pleased to know as well, there's a lovely comment from Neve Greenwood. Lovely to see and hear you, Grandad. Oh, hello. So she's there. They're, I told you they were watching and listening, listening to what Grandad's up to. So oh, what are you going to play for us next, Len, that's going to take us back to your early days of playing this organ and at the Ritz Richmond at Al? Well, the, the one tune that, of course, you're required to play when you play for the children, there, there was a song called the, the ABC Minors Song. We are the boys and girls well known as. Well, um, I won't just play that section, but I'll, I'll, try, I'll play, try and play the whole of it. The Blaze Away March by Kenneth Alford. And um, I shan't mind the grandchildren if you, if you want, want to, to join sing in. along. Sing along, perfect. <laughs> so, oh, well, I look forward to this. Bring back some, some memories, memories for me. And uh, um, I might even dig out the drum kit. Well, uh, let's see if we can see. I wish to look forward to this. So, I wonder if you can guess what the tune that Len is going to play is. It has a, a, some different words to the ones we're perhaps used to hearing. Excellent. Thank you, Len. It's funny, that, that particular tune, the very first time I ever heard that in my entire life was a, 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 a very early mono recording of Reginald Dixon at the Tower All right. playing that. Now, but, but, so, and he obviously played it as Blaze Away, and we all know it as Blaze Away, but what was the version, that, the words that you would have used when you were playing it at the oh, Ritz? Oh, the schoolboy words. Um, well, we used to turn around and frown at them if they, if they sang it, of course. 
all of a sudden, a dirty great shovel came floating through the air. Oh, right, OK. All of a sudden. Uh, yes, I think we can fit, fit the rest of it. What were your words? <laughs> I thought it was something to do with we are the boys and girls of the ABC. Oh, yes, yes. That, that's, those are the words that were printed Print. for them <laughs> and were up on the screen. Um, and, of course, the, 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 there was a section, that we are the boys and girls, well, minors of the... When it came to the ABC, it was a competition, really, between theatres as to who could shout the loudest. And, of course, the Rich Richmond and the Regal Kingston always won. Oh, we always did well. We always <laughs> did well. I enjoyed it very much. They were very formative years um, where I could go and feel the difference, which I needed to at that stage, having played the, the ABC Aldershot for two years. I needed to get on other organs and feel how different they were and how you needed to instantly adapt. And I was lucky in that George Blackmore... Uh, who sort of first of all heard me play at uh, ABC Aldershot um, and sort of vouched for my not wanting to damage the organ or anything uh, and I would look after it. Um, he, he, he said the right words to Joseph Seal and um, that's, what in, that's, what, that's how I had the entree really through, through George Blackmore. Uh, to whom I, I owe a terrific debt because he sat for hours with me answering questions and I was giving him, well, well what's this trumpet like and this organ, what's that tuba like on this organ, how does the saxophone vary from different, and uh, we had a great rapport one with the other. Does that remind you of anything? Sorry? Does that remind you of anything? Is that the... Does that remind you of anyone? Asking you similar questions. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, always a pleasure to answer questions that people um, throw at you. Um, and yes, you, you were certainly very, very curious. <laughs> and um, I admire that very much. And uh, you know, long may you continue to hear something different in other people and in other organs. Absolutely. And then try and get the best out of it you can in the time you've got available. Well, let's explore that a little bit, if we may, because mm. when I first started going to theatre organ concerts as, as a boy mm. and being introduced to Mr. Rawl, I can remember you being advertised as the man who played like George Wright in Ooh. the American style, whatever that was, which I didn't know at that time. Mm. And, of course, the influence of uh, Jesse Crawford. So how, how did the George Wright thing come about and the interest in the music and the style of Crawford? Well, I... Um just before I went into national service, uh, Ralph Bartlett of the Theatre Organ Club, um, he said, you want to come round? I've got some records coming over from America. You might like to listen to them. And, well, the, the very first track of the very first recording I heard of his just jumped out uh, so clean, so clear, uh, so appropriate was the registration. Um, this was something I was desperately trying to do on my little seven-rank Wurlitzer in Aldershot to create lots of variety and to use individual stops as well as the bigger sound, you know. Um, so I very, very quickly sort of felt that here was somebody doing something completely different to uh, the English organists and it was well worth trying hard. So I just kept listening to the George Wright recordings. I hear something fresh in every track. Yep. Couldn't wait for the next record to come out to see what's he going to do on this record. And he played, you know, he played a stripper and it really was very appropriate the noise that he was making. Um, but regardless of the sort of music, um, there was something obviously very special about this man. Um, and I just enjoyed those recordings and in my own little simple way, um, f following the track, but not, I never copied any of his arrangements. I, uh, uh, it's not that they were too complicated. They were often, uh, again, like Ronnie Binge, there was an air, air, air of simplicity, but he, it was originality that he, he managed to creep into his music and made, made all the tunes descriptions. Um, so I enjoyed it very much, and uh, if it did have an influence, I'm, I'm very flattered that somebody's actually sort of made mention of my name alongside his, but um, 
that wasn't the intention. However, it, the, 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 there are other organists that have influenced me, of course. Sydney Torch was a big one. Um, funnily enough, the, the man who helped me so much and um, was uh, with me throughout his life, really, um, George Blackmore, I didn't like his playing in the sense of the sound that he produced, but his musicianship, his arrangements, and his ability to play at sight, anything put in front of him, was Amazing. astonishing. Yeah. But I didn't actually find it very entertaining. So I think, um, I like to think that he's sort of looking down now and somewhat proud of... I'm sure he will be. And I think you're gonna play for us now a little piece that was actually made famous by Jesse Crawford when he came over to the United Kingdom and recorded your world at when it was in the Regal at Kingston at uh, the uh, sorry Empire, Empire Leicester, Leicester Square. Square. Well I know you, you're fond of this. Um, I'm very fond of it. It uh, has a very... I, I, will, I will do my best. Um, this isn't an organ in a 4,000 seat Empire Leicester Square style theatre but nonetheless it has the same sounds in it so we'll, we'll give it a go. It's um, uh, I just can't think of the title. It's called a uh, broken rosary. A broken rosary. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Yes. Well, it starts off with some chimes, and then it's got a lovely full tibia chorus sound that uh, some people find impossible to work out what the combination is. But I've told many people what the combinations are, but for some reason or other, they can't make it sound the same. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to hearing. I'll give it a try. And while Len takes his place at the console, we'll say hello to Per Olaf Schultz. Hi from Stockholm. Lovely to have you with us this afternoon. Hope you're enjoying the concert. Please enjoy a broken rosary.
I can remember the first time I heard you play that, and now I've heard, it, heard you play it uh, once or twice over the years since, and it still makes the hairs on the back of my head stand up, Len, that's amazing. That's uh, interesting about all music, isn't it? It means so much to so many people in so many different ways. And uh, I get a terrific uh, enjoyment out of simply making music for myself. Well, I, I, I can appreciate that, because mm. as I said, as we said earlier on, I'm lucky enough to sit in your living room yeah. for many hours just listening to you play, mm. and here as well. And, yeah, and you, you get that huge sense of satisfaction and mm. pleasure out of mm. just playing, which is amazing. It's sad that... Uh, in schools, so little music is being taught these days, and there are a few places where, of course, it still means something very special to headmasters and what have you, and they specialise in it. But uh, I think everybody of a young age should at least have an introduction into music. To music, absolutely. And uh, I always remember my my mother. Um, she encouraged me weekly to have these music lessons with the conductor of the local orchestra in Wales where I was brought up and um, you know I, I often think back if, if I'd never taken up the, uh, the idea of practicing mm. on a daily basis yep. which you have to you have to practice daily and but it's something I still enjoy doing I can tell I can tell. You wouldn't tell from the introduction to that, too. <laughs> anyway. Now, just moving on, I know you've travelled extensively over the years, giving concerts all over the world. I know you've been out to Australia and New Zealand and the States. But I know you have a particularly long association, a particular fond association, with the organ movement in the Netherlands. So how did that all come about, then? Oh, my father was stationed in Eindhoven during the war years. Um, this was when we still lived in South Wales, in Tonopandi. Um, and he used to come back and tell us a little of his travels. Um, and uh, as a young man, uh, I was lucky enough for him to take me out there and introduce me to some of the wonderful folk that looked after him during the, those difficult times. So uh, we very early on uh, had friends in Holland um, and as my piano playing improved and I took an interest in the organ um, I, I arrived at the point where uh, well I'm going to Holland um, with my parents again let's see if we can see some of the Dutch organs and I managed to obtain a list of all the theatres that I had organs in and I wrote to all the managers uh, as a young boy and I surprised myself, I had these responses and said, well, when you're over, pop in and we'll see what we can do. So I started by playing uh, some Dutch organs. Um, in general, not of the quality of instruments that I was used to experiencing uh, at Regal Kingston and Richmond. Um, but nevertheless, they were interesting and different. Um, and in no time at all, we formed a friendship with a gentleman called Dr. Van Owen. And um, he saw um, the activities that we were going through in this country with the various organ societies, uh, our own American Theatre Organ Society, the Theatre Organ Club and the Cinema Organ Society. And um, we, we told him exactly what we'd done to form a society, and he thought it would be a great idea um, if I would write out uh, the details of the essential ingredients for a successful society. So this we did, and uh, he came over many times to see exactly what, how we did things, and eventually they, they formed this society initially based around the Tushinsky Theatre in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. uh, which is an interesting instrument. Um, since then, uh, the society has gone from strength to strength, and not, not just that one instrument, but instruments all over Holland are being tenderly looked after by very fine engineering crews yep. and musicians. And um, the latest developments over there are every bit as good as anything we've achieved in this country here. That's really so good. I've been 
as encouraging as I can possibly be yeah. over the years and gone to play for them regardless of the condition of the organ and encouraged them and um, they now have individual societies in all the major cities and some very nice organs. Because a bit, a bit like your father but not at the same time my military service, my Air Force service took me to, to Holland and while I was out there I picked up some records mm -hmm. of perhaps probably the best known of Dutch organists, Cor Stein. Cor Stein yeah. Did you ever meet Cor Stein at all? No, I didn't, but everybody spoke of him. You felt that you, you met him, and of course there were still records around that we could hear of his very clean playing. He was really a studio musician, so he, he was at his best working in a studio. Um, I don't know that he played that many, shall we say, grand concerts and mm -hmm. such, but he certainly never played a wrong note, and he played Hammond, and he played the standard organs and the Compton organs that they had very, very well, very well. And didn't he also play the magic organ? The magic organ, And what, yeah. what actually was that? Yes. Yes, well, we, it was rather like George Wright, you know. There, there was this influx of records all of a sudden, some by English organists playing the magic organ. And um, during my travels, I was taken to see uh, the, the instrument, um, which was privately developed and had the most wonderful reverberation unit on it. And it had been built as a one-off instrument. It wasn't a mass production job by an individual out there, sadly, who's not long passed away. But um, I've been to play the instrument in their home and it still plays. It's needing just a little bit of attention now, and I think the NOF, with a little bit of luck, are going to take it on as a major project. Yeah. I shall certainly encourage them to do so. Excellent. But, um, it had a distinctive sound. Yes. Very clean. Um, and a, it well suited the continental style of music making, yeah. which is quite different to music making over here. Um, Absolutely. And just before we leave Holland and have some, some more music, one question that's come in from Michael Jay is that in your travels, as you played lots of different theatre organs, do they all have the same layout or do you have to keep turning up early to find your way around them? Well, the, the, the good news is that m most Wurlitzers um, follow a pattern which, large or small, uh, we organists are only too pleased to jump on the seat of a Wurlitzer and you will immediately know which direction to go with your registration selection of stops. Um, some other firms like Compton uh, had some variation but they had something similar to Wurlitzer mm -hmm. but it was not too difficult to, to get hold of. But the thing that was always essential was to make sure you had enough time to, to get to know the organ. Yep. Um, these organs talk to you as soon as you get on them and let you know how hard you've got to work or how careful you've got to be about certain stops or certain areas of the keyboard. And um, I wouldn't say this organ plays itself, but it's certainly uh, a beautiful instrument to put your hands on and whether you play the right notes or the wrong notes it still sounds nice. Absolutely, yeah. It does talk to you doesn't it? It really yeah, does. Yeah. Every time I get on it it says get off. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe so we're going to have some more music now and I think we're going to have some music from the pen of James Last and Klaus Wunderlich. Well I think it, it's nice uh, when folk like us are invited to Holland and America and Australia and New Zealand, you know. These are wonderful trips to, to go on, not just to meet the people and, and see the country, but to see the difference in the instruments and, and also to, 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 to check out the sort of music they like in their country. Mm. And uh, as part of the music that I play, I'm forever collecting sheets of music from here, there, everywhere. And I, I think the continental music is well worth a listen, yep. and it, it sits quite nicely with the, these very versatile instruments. And so, 
Um, I've, I've pulled out just for today a piece that I know um, René in um, Amsterdam, who's done a lot of wonderful work for the NOF. Um, he, he likes this tune particularly, so if you're there, René, um, I hope you enjoy Mornings at Seven, made famous by James Last. And, and then for those of you that uh, have fond memories of the magic organ, uh, Klaus von der Lick, uh, did pay a visit to it, um, but he, he also had a distinctive style, which um, if you throw at the uh, Wurlitzer, somehow it seems to make it work. So have a listen to... So we look forward to hearing... Two contrasting... Marvellous, take it away. Continental tunes. Thank you, Len. While Len gets ready, it's nice to hope you're all enjoying the music. I know there's 135 of you tuned in. I hope you're enjoying this afternoon. And please do support us and join our Patreon page if you would like to do that. We'd appreciate your support.
Excellent. Thank you. Were you tapping your feet? I was, yes. I was, in, I was also thinking that the, the piece by James Last, yes. I seem to remember it was used to introduce a television programme on a Sunday afternoon, it seemed to do with skiing. Perhaps any of the viewers that are watching this can, can remind us if that was the case or if whether I just imagined that. But it's a lovely piece, okay. lovely piece of music. But um, J James Last, uh, he had a knack of, uh, as I say, giving everybody something fresh. Uh, of course, there was terrific recording technique used as well. But um, I, mean, I love his arrangements. And Nelson Riddle and all those great... We must bring the music back! back. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. We don't all want to retrain as social workers or whatever no, the government would have no. us do. Talking about arrangements and things, I, I, we had a, a comment from a gentleman um, who said he, how much he had enjoyed in the past hearing you play a piece called Hoedown that you'd arranged. Oh, yes. And also a question from David Creswell about the shimmering string effect that right. I know you've used quite a number of times. And he said that he particularly, how do you create that even on a small world, it's sir? And he said he really enjoyed your use of that particular registration on the piece Meditation, which you recorded, mm -hmm. I think, on Nice and Easy. Mm -hmm. So tell us, tell us how that came about, how you do that. How do I do it? Yeah. Um, well, it's, I mean, for, for people who are interested in, in learning the, that side of the business, um, I can only suggest that you get your old tape recorders out and your old records out and you just listen, 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 listen and in understanding what your own instrument is capable of you've got to know what each and every stop is going to sound like in your head before you even touch the note. If you put down a 16 foot string you've got to know exactly what sound you're going to create. Mm. There's no point in going, sitting on an organ and thinking oh that, that'll sound all right. You must know the sound you want. You want it to be a thin sound, you want it to be a, a keen sound, you want it to be a brass sound, you want it to be a, a woodwind sound. And you've got to know exactly what each and every stop. And it's worth spending the time on an instrument just going around each and every stop. What's it sound like up here? What's it sound like down there? What's it sound like in the middle with chords, without chords? Um, and I think if you're prepared to give the amount of time necessary to um, make that a private study, um, you can do these things for yourself. However, to, to answer your question um, on the, the string thing, which is essentially a version of what um, Ronnie was doing with Mantovani, um, they suddenly discovered, or Ronnie discovered, uh, in making an arrangement, that when he cascaded notes down from high to low and they sustained, allowed them to overlap, that it created an artificial echo effect. Mm -hmm. And that's how it started. He wanted the orchestra to sound bigger and um, so he just allowed them to flop over one another. Not excessively, but um, it was uh, something that hadn't been done before, before. by an arranger. And the moment that happened for the first time in um, Kingsway Hall in London, where there used to be a lovely organ there, um, Kingsway Hall was the re favoured recording studio for Mantovani. And uh, the tale, tale is told, and he wrote about it in his book. Now, the moment it happened, the whole orchestra stood up. They wow. were all quite possessed by this new sound around them yeah and I think that's what appeals to me I like sound around me I like a wall of sound mm. it doesn't have to be loud sound in fact I hate loud sounds um, there, there is a, a, quite a following for the organ from a point of view of that it can sound big and bold um, but uh, for me for, um, I enjoy making a big, bold sound, as you heard at the beginning. But for the rest of the two-hour concert, I want to hear all aspects of the, the organ, organ. Yeah. if I possibly can. So I do like to get to know each organ separately. And regardless of the size of the organ, you can get this sort of string-like sound. I sometimes call it a wall of sound. 
um, and it relies on not very many stops being used. But um, when you get to work inside the organ, you very quickly realize that all the high sounds come from very small pipes. Yeah. And when you look at all the small pipes, they all look very much the same. So it's rather like a string orchestra in a sense. All the violins look the same. So if you stay in the upper treble part of the keyboard, the high part of the keyboard, um, and just select the sounds that use all these small pipes, and you put a wall of background sound of string tone. So you would have, for those of you who understand these things, 16, 8 and 4 foot violin on a very small organ yep. on your left hand and you play a big chord on your left hand. It'll only be quiet, but it'll just be a, a shimmer of string, string sound. And then on the top, you bring in the melody, utilising all the high pitches. Yep. And you overlay one over the other. So I hope you've all written that down at home, <laughs> so you know how to do it. In, cause, and we'll be check, we'll be asking questions at the end. And I think we're going to hear that in the next item, which I think is, you're going to play for is next memories, and contrast that with a, a bright little jazzy number. Yes, um, memories. We, we've got to play something um, from the sort of uh, current theatrical world, I suppose you might say. Um, memories is evocative for many of us. We've got certainly memories at the moment, haven't we? Time's gone by. Right. Let's hope they come back very soon for the rest of us. Um, and I'll, I'll try and demonstrate this for you, and let you hear how you get this wall underneath. And then the sing and it's very simple. It's just three notes of the left hand. And yeah, I've heard this. It's very simple, three <laughs> notes. <laughs> So as Len gets himself ready to play this next couple of items, can I just say to all of you that are tuning in, many, many thanks indeed for your wonderfully warm, positive comments about this afternoon. And it's good to know that so many of you are enjoying the concert with us this afternoon. And as I mentioned earlier on, you know, we are a small charity. We have our Patreon page. If you'd like to join and subscribe to that, it helps us to keep this wonderful instrument um, up and running, along with all the other exhibits we have here in the museum. So, Len, over to you and let's hear this wonderful string sound.
Is it winning for that role? Yes, yes. It's a nice one to show off the piano. Absolutely. Of yeah. which this uh, is a particularly fine one. You have a lovely one here. Thank you. Um, it's a Steinway, isn't it? It is. It's a Steinway. It's originally used for, with the Conacher Theatre organ at the Ritz Nottingham. So it has quite a history to it, as well as the time it's spent with us here. Well, Len, sad to say, our time this afternoon draws to a close together. Um, oh, I can't believe how quickly the time started. has gone. I know we just started, but these good people, some of them are probably getting ready to go to bed in Australia or whatever. So, Len, as always, it has been such a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, and many thanks for all you've done for me personally um, and all you do to support us here at the museum and the theatre organ world you know, at, at, at large. Um, you know, your contribution is unparalleled, I believe. I and just enjoy it. Well, I know, and <laughs> you're so humble and when you say that. No, I um, just enjoy it and share the enthusiasm and um, let's keep the wonderful machines alive. Well, let's do our best to do that. And while you're still you know, able to come and play for us, that would be wonderful and we look forward to seeing you here again very soon. Before we sign off, ladies and gentlemen, can I just also thank all the team here at the Musical Museum for making this entire production possible. Len and I have the, the great fun of sitting here and listening and playing to um, uh, you know, the music. There's a huge amount of effort goes on behind the scenes, and I know up in the control room it's a bit frantic, it's a bit like the con you know, flight deck on Concorde or whatever. But uh, thanks, guys, for that. Thanks also to all the team behind the scenes who must say make it all possible. So my thanks to that. I look forward to seeing you all very much uh, again next month for our next stream concert. And of course, if you've enjoyed hearing about the world, it's a you can get our new book, which is online, which Len is so going to kindly hold up for me, which Len has also contributed to and given us some thoughts and comments. So the book is available through the uh, museum's website. It's also through Amazon and all kind of good outlets and retailers. So you can get a copy of it if you would like that, and that will tell you more information about our beautiful world so. But as I say, that's all the time for us we have this afternoon. So it's goodbye from all of us here at the Musical Museum. It's goodbye from Len Rawl. And Len, once again, thank you very much for being such a wonderful, wonderful guest. And we're going to let you have the last word with the final medley of music for us. And what are you going to play for us to take us out? Well, my, um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, I'm always a believer that um, when I first used to listen to the music uh, of the theatre organ on the radio, what I was really looking forward to, and I have to admit it, were the last items in the programme. Not because they were loud or anything, but because they were popular. Yep. Um, and you usually get a couple of tunes that were more popular than everything that went before. And um, so I've tried to stick by that to some extent. Um, I don't particularly enjoy some of the music of today, but in more recent years, there have been some wonderful tunes um, that carry very well on the theatre organ. And there are a couple I'm just going to pull out here. Um, Elvis Presley used to sign off his Las Vegas show, I'm told, with a little tune called Always On My Mind. And then um, Sting were, possibly still are, very, very popular. And one of his biggest selling records that went around the world and been at the top of the charts for a long time was a little tune called Every Breath You Take. So um, just by way of showing you that the, the organ can play music of today, Absolutely. we'll have, um, have a little of that. And with it, my thanks to you for inviting me to turn the blower on once again. I enjoyed, I enjoyed turning the blower on to tune the organ for you, but uh, it's a great, great privilege just to play the lovely sounds of this organ. And um, uh, it'll all come to an end far too quickly for me. But um, that's that. Um, I've got one little tune to take it down on. Do you want to say anything? Before no, we... other than to say, Len, God bless you for coming. Safe journey back to Chorleywood. Right. It's been lovely to see you. See Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today. Thank you so much. And the last word and the last sounds go to our beautiful Wurlitzer in the wonderful, capable hands of Mr. Len Rawl. <laughs>